functions are a way to make code modular. So you can do the same task repeatedly without having to type out the same commands, maybe with just different variations that you're going to use as inputs. To create a function in, in uh, MATLAB, what you do is you go function, and then you have what you want to come out, and that equals, and then you put uh, the function name. All right, and then what comes in. And don't forget to end with an end statement. And then somewhere in that function, you need to define what out is. Maybe that eats equal to two. And so when you call it, you can say, there's my function. And maybe I have input five. And then that's going to print the value two. But let's say we had this as two times in then it is going to print a value of 10. Okay, and then I could change this input. Instead of 5, I could change it to 3. And then the output would change to 6. Okay, so I can call this function over and over because I've defined it once. And then I can call it multiple times. So, first of all, here's a just the example that we talked about. Here's the function, and just with x and y variables. Now, before MATLAB 2016b, a function was always stored as a separate file. And you always had to store it as like myfunction.m. But now you can put them inside a script file, and it'll read those and then allow you to use the function without having to create a separate M script. All right, so this is an example of the double it function. I'm just going to go ahead and run that. It defines my function. And then when I run this double it, it comes up with eight. Now another option on functions is to use what's called an anonymous function. It's kind of like an inline function. It's good for a one line function. And so I can define my function. This is going to be my function name equals, and then I use the at symbol. And then this is where my inputs come in. And then I define my function. So in this case, it would be two times uh, in. All right, I can end it with a semicolon if I want. All right, so there's my anonymous function. And if I define that, I'm just going to redefine the double it. But it gives me the same answer, the same function as before. I'm just doubling a number. Now, functions allow you to reuse code. All right, so I'm going to define a function like this one. Let's say I need to display the current temperature of my temperature control lab or this incubator. So I've defined that once, and then I can call it five times, for example. There are all my temperatures, but I've been able to display those without having to type this out five different times. All right, now what if you have multiple inputs? Now here is, is an example where I have X and Y. I can just separate those by commas. Later, we're going to learn about arrays as well, where your input could be an array, a collection of numbers. So I'm going to run this one, and that's just going to define the function. No output there. And then I'm going to input 2 for x and 3 for y. It's like I've substituted these in, and it'll substitute them in here, calculate my new z value, because there's where I've defined what comes out. And then it's going to equal 5. So I've just added those two numbers together. I've added 2 and 3 to give me 5. Now what about multiple outputs? Okay, we can have multiple inputs like x and y. But if we want multiple outputs, we can do that by just defining an array. So my first output is going to be x plus y. 
And then my second output, okay, in parentheses, is going to be x to the power of y. So when I define that, I'm going to have two things that are output. There's going to be the summation and then x to the y power. So that's 2 to the third. All right, let's do our activity now. All right, we want to make a function that divides two values. You can choose any two values as the user input. So if I just run this, I can see that I can put in 2 and 3, but it doesn't do anything. So I need to create a function to evaluate x divided by y. So this is a very simple one, but let's go ahead and just do our inline function. I'll just call this div equals, and then I'm going to have x comma y, and then it's going to return x divided by y. All right, and I'll put the semicolon at the end. And then I can call my div function with my x and y that came in. All right, so there's 2 divided by 3. I could have just written out x divided by y, but I just wanted to show you an example of defining a function. And then you could call it multiple times if you wanted to. All right, so here's another activity. In the last lesson, objects are on this, you know, Arduino mentioned the lab object. We're going to use this, um, and here's just a review of some of the functions that you can use with the TC lab. The very first one, though, we want to turn on the LED to 70% and then turn it off after 10 seconds. We'll create a function to turn on the LED print, um, and then pause it for one se second. All right, and we'll call the function multiple times to verify that it works. All right, so let's go ahead and just connect to our lab. I'm going to do clear lab first, just in case I was already connected. And then I've got TC lab. And I'm going to create the function. Now, this has multiple things in it, so I probably just want to uh, not create an anonymous function, but just one that's a regular function. If I don't have any outputs, I can just put the open and close square brackets, meaning nothing's coming out. And then I can say um, LED on, maybe that's my function name. And then I give it my lab and then also my value. Those are two things that I need to pass in. And then what I want to do with lab.led is I'm going to put in the value V and Let's see, I will pause for 10 seconds. And let's see, what else? Um, oh, print out the percent that it's on. Okay, so let's go ahead and just display um, the LED is on at, all right, I'll put a comma here and num to string with V and finish it off with a percent sign. Okay, let me end here, and then let's call this. Okay, LED on, let's turn it on to 70. All right, I guess I should have done the clear lab to disconnect it uh, later. All right, so scalar cannot be indexed uh, with a period. Okay, let's see what that problem is. Hmm, okay. That's on line two. And hmm, let me just see if I can find this. I have a scalar. Oh, um, oh, I need to put in lab here. OK, let me try that again. All right, it's going to wait 10 seconds. And the LED is going to be on at a certain percentage and then after that it's going to be uh, print that out okay I can also go ahead and put a semicolon there so it doesn't uh, print out when I connect to the LED or uh, turn on turn on the LED to a certain uh, percentage right there all right so now let's go on to the next one uh, actually we, we can do this I'm going to change the pause <clears throat> to one and then let me just turn this on to different percentages. 
just to verify that it works with a couple of different values. Okay, so it's going to run, and you can see the one second pause between those. And I'm just looking at the LED right now, it's uh, getting dimmer. All right, uh, create a new function that adds to the prior function by also turning on the heater. <clears throat> this is going to be this is going to be lab.q1 to the same level as the LED. In addition to printing the level of the heater and LED, have the function return temperatures one and two. So let's just go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to define this new function that's going to be. I'll call this uh, heater heaters on. All right, and I'll just have that same value, but now I want to return two things, a temperature one and a temperature two. All right, so my LED is on. I'll also turn on my heater one to that same level, and I'll put the heater is on at that percentage, and then let's get temperature one and temperature two. <clears throat> okay, temperature one is gonna be lab.t1, and then temperature two is going to be lab.t2. I can just put those all on the same line. Okay, I've defined my function. Let me go ahead and just insert a cell below, and I'll use this function a couple times. Heaters on, and I will do lab. Okay, so this is going to be lab, comma. Let's start off with 100% on. And I'll need to connect. So I'll do clear lab and then I'll do lab TC lab. All right, and let's do a couple of these just to verify that it works. I'll go down to 80, 60, 40, 20, and then I'll turn it off. All right, let's run this now. <clears throat> okay, I say, oop, I need the equal sign here. All right, and let's just see if it'll run. It's running through all of these. And again, I forgot to put a semicolon here. The output looks a little bit bad. So let me let me try that one more time. With the semicolon there, oop, I forgot to run the function. You can see that it's going to do the same thing because the function hasn't been run again. So I need to run this cell to redefine the function. And you can see that here. You can see the number. This is the order that they're run. So this one was run at 19. That was 16. So I need to run this one. It'll turn it to 20. And then this one will run, but now it won't print out that extra Q1 that was there. Okay, so. Oh, let's see. There's something else going on here. Oh, you know what? It's right here. I have T1 and T2 that are being output. Um, there's my answers right here. Okay, and all right. I should have, if I want to display them, I could do something like this and display the heater values. Okay, so there's my uh, function, and I have the two outputs going on, T1 and T2, but it looks like uh, there's something wrong with this. Okay, it's not putting out two of them, so I'm just going to output, um, let's see, Z here, and I'll define Z equals T1 comma T2, and let me run that one more time and see if that'll give me a better result here. Okay, so now I'm getting both values out. Okay, and I can put a semicolon here to suppress that output as well. Okay, so that's it for functions. Uh, we've shown how to define a function, how to have multiple inputs, multiple outputs from a function. And um, you know you can do this anonymous function, which is one line, like we showed up here. Okay, there's our anonymous function, or just a regular function. And again, after MATLAB 2016b, you can just define these functions directly in your script. 
and then you can start using them before you had to store it as a separate uh, file. Okay, that's it. Next, we're going to be doing loops and then input.